Uh, my name is Rich Bibby and I'm a technical advocate uh, with Netbox Labs. Um, so let me just run you through what we're going to be presenting. Um, so we have, um, we're going to do a quick introduction to Netbox Labs because we are quite a young uh, company. So I'll just give you a bit of background there. We'll look at what is a network source of truth and uh, why do we need why do we need one? Uh, it's one of the uh, you know if you it's one of the key sort of phrases that we're hearing a lot these days with regards to network automation. So I'll talk about that a little bit. I'll introduce Netbox for those of you who aren't familiar, and also introduce Netbox Cloud, uh, which is the software as a service um, version of Netbox that we're offering. Um, I'll talk briefly about this journey that we see our customers on from uh, going from the documenter to the automator. And this is based on lots of feedback that we've had from, from our customers. And then we'll introduce this, um, what we're seeing as a modern uh, network automation reference architecture. And this is where the solution from IP Fabric also fits um, into that overall we'll picture. So we'll talk about this reference architecture that we've put together based on, again, on feedback that we, get, we see in the marketplace. So um, Netbox Labs then. So we were founded in uh, 2023 in New York. So we're about one year old now, just coming up for a one year anniversary. Uh, we are the commercial steward of the Netbox uh, open source project. Um, we have a world-class team uh, that, that built and led, first of all, NS1, uh, but also founded the uh, Netbox project. Obviously, a lot of you are familiar with, uh, with Jeremy Stretch uh, from that point of view. Um, we have some world-class investors, and in the short time that we've, we've been around, uh, we actually have some, some world-class customers now as well. So uh, that's a little bit about uh, Netbox Labs. And we like to say that we, we make it easy to build and manage uh, complex networks. So let's talk about a network source of truth for a little bit. Um, so first of all, what is a network source of truth? Well, it's a representation of the intended state of your network. So we're talking about uh, the state of the devices and their configurations, their connections, and the services that run on the network as well. And this, the intended state is captured in the source of truth. Now, the key, uh, the key thing to point out here is that this is different from the actual state or operational state of the network. So the operational state is what our monitoring tools and our discovery tools and our assurance tools like IP Fabric are telling us that it that is the state of the network actually, the operational state. But the source of truth is actually where we're defining the intended state. So us as the network engineers and the architects, we're saying what is in, net, in Netbox is the intended state of my network. And with, with Netbox as a source of truth, we have a structured, comprehensive, and uh, cohesive data model, which means that actually, you know, you, you, you can't just throw data randomly into it. It's not, we're not talking about spreadsheets, it's not text files, it's a, it's a database, it's a relational database uh, that enforces uh, the data model. So uh, what this means is that uh, your automation tools can, can interact with Netbox uh, in, a, in a structured way get back the data that they need uh, to deploy the network configuration changes um, onto your devices. So without this um, source of truth, um, you can't do any network automation at scale, really. You just, you know, if, you, if you've got disparate um, sources of truth, like spreadsheets, for example, um, you just, you will struggle to do any kind of automation at scale. So Netbox, as I'm sure some of you are familiar with, is, um, is a huge, uh, you know, there's a huge open source community around Netbox. It's been around for a few years now. These are just some of the numbers. I mean, yesterday we, we got over, uh, we, we went over the 14,000 GitHub stars. Uh, people love Netbox generally everywhere. You know, it, it's used all over the world. Um, there at the, if you look at the 11,000 plus software commits, I mean, it, it gives you an idea of the kind of um, the level of development and activity on the Netbox project. Uh, you know, there are new features being added all the time. So uh, Netbox, this is where Netbox comes in then as the source of truth, as, a, as, as I mentioned. Um, so you think of it as your system of record for network management and automation. And with Netbox, you are eliminating your, your spreadsheets. Uh, you're breaking down those silos between different parts of data. So if you think about it from a networking perspective, you've got DSIM data, you've got IPAM data. And typically when customers are starting out, they've got this data in files that are spread all over the place. They're not correlated with each other. You know, the, the, the data center guys don't necessarily know what the, what the IPAM team is, is, is looking after, so we need to bring this data together. And that's what Netbox does. Um, it really accelerates network automation because um, of its REST API and uh, GraphQL interface and things like the Python clients for it. So 
um, your network automation tools can easily integrate with Netbox um, and they can pull the intended state data that they need uh, out of Netbox to then do their job and deploy it to the network. So it really empowers uh, network automation. Um, and again, just coming back to the point that everything is in Netbox and everything is correlated. So there are no other sources of truth here for, for the network. It's not in any files anywhere else. It's, it's in Netbox. Now, at this point, I'm just going to sit down for a second and click through um, the UI. Um, just to in, just in, introduce you to the Netbox uh, UI and just, we'll just have a bit of an explore. And um, so what we're looking at here is the, uh, the sites level within Netbox. And the first site we'll have a look at is the Amsterdam site. And the first thing you'll notice is that um, the site details are populated on the left hand side. So we can see that this is a, you know, it's a branch office within the, um, within the Europe region in the Netherlands. And on the right hand side, we can see all the related objects um, for Netbox. Now, the first thing I'll show you is, first of all, actually, I'll just click on the topology icon here. Now, this topology viewer is actually a plugin for Netbox. Um, it's, it's a plugin that's been developed by uh, people in the community, excuse me. And it's just an example of how extensible actually Netbox is, and that's just one typical plugin example. If we look at the related objects again, and if we look on racks, we can see that we have one rack uh, in the Amsterdam site. And if I click on that rack, um, we can see things like the uh, power and space utilization, the dimensions of the rack, and we also have the rack elevations. So this is great for local hands in a data center that need to know what's connected to what, what, posi what rack positions devices should be in. And if I click on the uh, switch that we have in the rack, um, first of all, what we can see is that this is a, a Juniper EX4300 switch, 48 ports. Um, we know it's in which position it's in in the rack. And if I click on uh, interfaces, and then if we look at the first interfaces, and what you can see here is which interfaces are connected to other devices. So if I look at the first interface, we can see that this is connected to the router at this site. And if I just scroll across and then click on the uh, cable trace icon, um, we can see that this interface is connected to uh, the router on uh, gigabit ethernet port 000. And for the guys in the data center who are looking to trace this connection, uh, they can see that it's a red cat six cable that's, uh, that's half a meter long. Um, so it's a great, you know, it's a very useful tool for, uh, for local hands um, in the data center. Now, if I go back to the uh, device itself, Sure. Um, how does it know that? Like, how does it collect that data? Do you have to manually put it in, or is there some? I assume there's some automation. That yeah, it's not. It's not dynamically uh, sort of reaching out to devices and pulling back that information. Although you can, you can do that with with plugins and so on. You can use Napalm, um, but this this data has been entered manually okay. because this is the this is not what the observed state of the network is. This is the intended state. So okay, the right. person putting this network together has said this cable connects to this device. Um, so yeah, if I look back on, uh, sorry, if I look back on the device itself, and this is where the um, this is where the IPAM data correlates with the DSIM data. So if you look at the primary IP, uh, IPv4 address that we have here, we can see that this is assigned to the management interface of the switch, and we can see which uh, prefix and which VLAN this belongs to, and uh, we can click on that and see that we can see the utilization of this VLAN and the prefix. Okay, so. The other thing I'd like to show you is we'll just look at another device uh, within Netbox that we have here, and we have our switch in Sydney. So this is a Cisco uh, 9200 24 port switch, and uh, very similar, you can see interfaces and all the other, um, all the other um, uh, attributes of this device. But one thing I just wanted to show you was the render configuration. Now, this tab, if, when you click on it, you can see the rendered device configuration. And this is based on a, a Ginger template that's being that's stored in a remote Git repository that's synchronized with Netbox. So you can see we're pulling together the IPAM data and the DSIM data and the state of the network and actually you know, generating a, a device configuration natively within Netbox. And this is actually a fairly new, uh, fairly new feature. Uh, it came out a few releases ago. Um, prior to this, you would have had to use a, a separate tool, something like Ansible or Python to, to generate uh, your rendered uh, device configuration, but you can now do that natively uh, within Netbox. Uh, okay, so I will actually, I'll show you one other thing there. So this is coming from a remote data source, like I mentioned, and actually you can see if we look at the uh, config templates, uh, this, is, this is stored uh, in Netbox. 
and it's coming from a data source that is a remote data source that's a Git repository, and that gets automatically synchronized. So you can maintain your Jinja templates in a remote Git repository. People can make changes, commit those changes, and then they'll be synchronized into, into Netbox. Uh, so I will just uh, flip back uh, to the slide deck. So I understand, like, you know, what you had in there, that's the intent, right? Yeah. So um, and I'm sorry if I'm going too much ahead, but don't worry. can it do like sort of a diff? So can it sort of like, OK, this is the intent. This is the expected configuration. And the configuration I have, the operationally wise, is different. Yeah. Is there like sort of a tool which can like monitor, like there, there's a basically, uh, how is it called, uh, the configuration? Um, is, is the difference between the between yeah the difference between the intended yeah. state and the and the, and the um, yeah and the uh, observed state. yeah exactly yeah that's exactly um, you know what we're going to get onto a little bit further through, okay. through this okay, presentation problem. because mm -hmm. the, the the plugin that we've got for from IP Fabric mm -hmm. actually does that perfectly and it will show us the intent it shows show the difference between the intended okay, and the actual cool. state thank you no worries um, okay so um, just moving on to the next slide. Um, now, Netbox Cloud, so that's Netbox itself that you, you're possibly familiar with, which is the, the same, you know, it's, it's the Netbox code base. But Netbox Cloud is basically a software as a service uh, version of Netbox that, that we offer. Um, and this is just giving you a, a sort of a sneak peek into the, um, the, the administration console. So if you uh, were a Netbox Cloud customer, you access your um, uh, administration console and you can get the details of your instances that you have running. Now, obviously, people will have dev instances, production instances, and so on like that. So there may be more, more than one, and you can manage them from within there. So with Netbox Cloud, we're actually, it's accelerating and take, and removing the risk of network operations. So pr uh, previously, well, with, with Netbox um, sort of uh, on-premise or uh, the open source version, you would have to maintain this yourself. So you may have a team of people that look after uh, the databases, um, they know some Linux, so they can maintain the, the service that their Netbox is running on. But with Netbox Cloud, um, you don't have to worry about any of that. You just consume it as, uh, as a service. And, so it allows, and this allows you to go faster. So one of the key points here is that um, you, know, you, can, you can have a push button lifecycle operations. So for example, the upgrade process for Netbox is super, super simple with, with Netbox Cloud. Um, you know, you, you get a recommended path, so you're not worrying about are the plugins that we've got compatible with Netbox. All of that is taken care of for you, and it's a very easy upgrade process. Um, new things that are coming soon, actually. Uh, we, we're going to be launching a cloud event stream, which will be like a message bus, um, so that if you had another tool that was listening for, um, or sorry, you know, subscribing to the message bus, it could then take actions based on what it's receiving. So you add a new VLAN in Netbox, this drops onto the onto the uh, the message bus, and then it's picked up by another tool that's listening, and they can then say deploy that VLAN to you know to a network. So watch out for that. That's coming very very soon. We'll probably be talking about that in the next couple of weeks. Um, it allows you to go safely as well. Um, so the platform that Netbox Cloud runs on is is absolutely rock solid. It has all of the sort of um, uh, the enterprise features that you'd expect uh, with it with a cloud application. Uh, things like a cloud firewall. Uh, we have automated backups. There are um, Sing, you know, you have single sign-on uh, for, for the interface and so on, um, and very, very much simplified plugin management as well, which is, which is a key feature. Um, so there are no worries uh, with regards to plugins. A very mature data model, and we have things like you know, uh, compliance. So we have our SOC 2 report. So we, you know, uh, security is a, is a feature that we're very strong on as well. Um, just one quick question, just yeah. Dominic. Um, how do you deal so the polling? How I understand this is coming from the cloud. Yep. So you have to whitelist your sources to make it happen. How would you deal with an air gap network where you have no internet connectivity? Um, so the the IP allow list functionality allows you to uh, whitelist which IP addresses that you would connect from. So for your you know your public facing Netbox cloud instance, then uh, I mean the other way around. If you poll devices, ah uh, well. We're not, we're not actually polling devices. So Netbox doesn't do active polling of devices. There are other tools such as IP Fabric that would do that and then feed that data into Netbox. Okay, so you, don't, you only need uh, integration to these other tools. You don't need any, let's say, customer network uh, accessibility whatsoever, yeah? No, no. Okay, got it. Well, you, you can have that. I mean, you know, that, that, there are connectivity options, but as, as standard deployment, it lives in the cloud. But other tools uh, like the IP Fabric plugin can actually, you know, integrate with Netbox, and they will be based 
uh, on-premise, but can talk to NetBox. But you need somehow a connectivity to these other managed, uh, let's say, management tools so that you can get the data into your platform. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you can uh, you can populate now NetBox with with other tools. There are there, you know there are different ways of doing it, and IP Fabric is a great way of doing it as well. So you'll actually, you'll actually see this demoed in a second, um, where we so we take data from IP Fabric and then send that into NetBox. Okay. So when we talk about source of truth, I'm sorry. You were, yep. the, I, the one thing that comes up is compliance. Mm -hmm. So. How immutable is this data set and how, when we say trust of uh, source of truth, in what yep. context are we making that claim? Well, um, it's basically sort of the, the owners of the data, so the, so the networking team, the network engineers, the architects, they, they are saying that this data is the intended state of, uh, you know, of the network. So the network source of truth, you know, rather than having disparate systems with, with di you know, as different sources of network, uh, network information, it all lives within NetBox, and that's what makes it the authoritative, uh, you know, data source for, for for network information. So, from a compliance perspective, if I'm audited and someone says, "What's my intended state?" NetBox is my intended yes. state. It doesn't track the current state; it just tracks the intended state. Correct. How do I update the intended state? Um, well, well, we'll get into this as well mm -hmm. uh, in a second. We'll actually demo the whole the whole okay. thing for you, so so you'll see that. Sorry, I was just another question regarding yep. the data you 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 pour inside uh, through uh, through your uh, your tool as well as manually. Are yep. there any type of integration that you support uh, for additional tool that may the customer have uh, already implemented in the past or uh, Absolutely. part of asset invent? Absolutely. We have a you know classic example is the integration we have with IP Fabric, where there are integrations available for uh, you know all the tools in your network automation stack, for example, can integrate with uh, you know with NetBox. Hey, and uh, considering that we are talking about a single source, source, source of truth, is there a way to validate uh, the data or to double check if something, uh, you know, mismatch, uh, overlapping uh, old data versus new data? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's what we're going to talk about with with IP Fabric in a second. So, yeah, if we can we can get to that, that'll be that'll be good. Just briefly, uh, I've only got uh, I think a minute or so left to, to just wrap this up this this segment. Um, so what we see with our customers is that a lot of them are on this journey from documenting their network through to then actually automating it at the far end. So it depends where they are. So we see customers um, deploying NetBox Cloud basically to just get rid of their spreadsheets and get everything into a single source of truth. Um, we also see people then moving on from that to when, where they actually start to model uh, their network data, which is again is enforcing consistency across the models within, within the, uh, the database. And then other people that are sort of uh, further down the road on their journey into network automation um, are actually, you know, they're at the point where they can actually implement changes based on updates to the source of truth. They can pull uh, uh, configurations dynamically that are generated within, within NetBox. Um, and they can do things like assurance, which is what we're going to talk about uh, in a second, where they can resolve those, um, the issues between, you know, the intended state and the, uh, and the actual state. And lastly, just wanted to show you this, uh, this slide, which is, uh, again, based on the conversations that we're having with our uh, customers in the market, um, we have this network automation reference architecture. And as you can see, NetBox uh, Cloud sits in the center there as the, uh, as the network source of truth. And then we have other elements around it. So if we start at the, uh, the bottom left, so the operations team, they may be using, they may be deploying changes directly uh, to network devices. They might be using a tool like ServiceNow. ServiceNow or the, the, um, the operations team need to know what the intended state of the network is and they, they will change the intended state of the network. What happens next then, this would initiate an update. So the automation tools, which could be Ansible, uh, Python, uh, whichever automation tools are in your stack, would then query NetBox and say, hey, give me the intended state, give me the configuration I need to deploy. Um, and then once the intended state has been deployed to the network devices, we then get into the observability side of things. And this is where IP Fabric comes in, and we'll talk about that next. Uh, but basically, the observed state is what's being picked up by those other tools. And then you end up in a situation, if you have this uh, feedback loop, if you like, of, OK, there's a difference now between the intended state and the actual state, which gives the network operators then an opportunity to do something about that and address that. 